Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, waiting a few minutes after our official start time. We were just ironing out some issues. And uh, all right, we're going to get started. So uh, once again, good morning. Welcome, and thank you for attending today's webinar as a part of Chagrin River, Wa Chagrin River Watershed Partners Winter Webinar Series for the 2023 to 2024 season. My name is Chris. I'm an AmeriCorps service member serving as the watershed steward at Chagrin River Watershed Partners. This is our eighth webinar as part of our series where CRWP partners with environmental professionals to deliver educational presentations to other interested professionals and members of the public. We have been and will continue to promote the series through our e-newsletter, social media pages, and our website. If you're interested in learning more about this series, feel free to check out our website and sign up for more webinars that we have scheduled over the course of this month and next month. If you have questions, feel free to type any as we go in the chat box on your screen, and we can cover them at the end of the presentation during the Q&A session. Just to let you know, today's presentation is being recorded and will eventually be uploaded to our YouTube page. In my follow-up email, I will include a link to this recording so you can review it at any time. In addition, this email will include a survey link that helps Chagrin River Watershed Partners prepare high quality webinars for the public and environmental field at large. A PDF file of today's presentation should be available on the GoToWebinar page and will be uploaded to our website in the coming days. For today's webinar, Erica Henrich, Henrichsen, I think, <laughs> and Devin and Devin Range from Western Reserve Land Conservancy covering the Conservancy's Reforest Our City program. They will present on how WRLC seeks to increase Cleveland's tree canopy by growing trees, advocating for mature trees, and engaging residents and volunteers in protecting neighborhood trees. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Erica and Devin, and welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. Um... Welcome everyone to Western Reserve Land Conservancy's Reforesting the Forest City presentation. Um, a little bit about Devin and I to start. My name is Erica Hendrickson. I'm the Community Forestry Coordinator at Western Reserve Land Conservancy. Uh, a little bit of background on me. I got a bachelor's in environmental studies, a bachelor's in promotional communications, and a certificate in geographic information systems from Cleveland State University in 2021. I started my career as a community forester in 2020 through the uh, Cleveland Foundation Summer Internship Program, and I've been uh, pretty involved in restoring the city's urban tree canopy ever since. I worked at Holden Arboretum for a short period before coming to my role uh, here. Um, I'm, I'm truly a tree lover to my core and my job at Western Reserve Land Conservancy is really cool because it merges a lot of like passions and talents of mine because uh, we're, we're truly not just doing urban forestry, we're doing community forestry. Uh, so there's a lot of marketing and communications and planning and community building that I really love as well as, of course, getting our hands dirty in the soil and being amongst the trees. Uh, so that's, that's me. Uh, again, my name is Eric Hendrickson and then I'm going to pass it to Devin to talk about him. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Devin. I'm from Cleveland originally. Uh, studied political science uh, for my undergrad at University of Chicago. Uh, came back to Cleveland after school and uh, ended up getting into tree work uh, by taking the tree steward training program run by Western Reserve Land Conservancy back in 2018. Uh, and since then, uh, I've gone on to work in the tree care industry for a few years. Uh, I had my own business for a little while, and then I ended up back uh, working for the uh, Land Conservancy um, a little over a year ago now. <clears throat> I just uh, achieved my certified arborist certification uh, through the International Society of Arboriculture, uh, and Erica will soon do that as well. So uh, good luck to Erica, uh, and I'll pass it back to Erica to get started on our presentation. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, Devin and I work under the Reforest Our City program at Western Reserve Land Conservancy, which was launched with the mission of increasing Cleveland's tree canopy by growing trees, advocating for mature trees, and empowering residents and volunteers 
to do the same. Uh, so in this presentation, we're gonna go over why that is our mission, how we're accomplishing it, and what that kind of looks like. Uh, so a little bit of background on the city. Uh, once upon a time in the 19th century, Cleveland was nicknamed the Forest City. Uh, it was described as giving an impression of nothing but thick forest where one suddenly sees a church tower, an elegant house, and fine villages. Uh, large sycamore trees, elm trees, maple trees, and more covered the region. Uh, so the origins of this nickname are very closely tied to the beautiful temperate forest uh, that covered the region, as well as the concentrated efforts early on by civic leaders to preserve, enhance, and add to this natural beauty as the city experienced rapid growth and development in the mid-1800s. Uh, there truly was a broad community commitment to tree planting and conservation that contributed to Cleveland's reputation uh, as a city adorned with a rich tree canopy. Um, however, unfortunately, uh, the typical story as time passed, we found ourselves witnessing uh, a gradual decline in the city's tree canopy. Uh, and the reasons behind this decline are, are relatively numerous, urban development, industrialization, uh, the introduction of invasive species such as emerald ash borer, disease and pest infestations in general, Dutch elm disease, chestnut blight, uh, lack of proper care and maintenance, maintenance and the resources to do so, uh, land use changes, uh, the list goes on and on, um, but the urban tree canopy has been declining. Um, now our canopy is only 18 percent in that loss uh, looks like it's only continuing. The city loses an average of 75 acres of its tree canopy cover every single year. Uh, and at that rate, the city's tree canopy cover will fall to just 14% by 2040, uh, which is hardly enough to live up to our nickname, the Forest City. Uh, and a healthy urban tree canopy is at least 30%, which is why the city set a goal to reach that by 2040. Um, but achieving this is going to be no small feat. Uh, it's going to require very much a dual commitment of both planting trees and preserving mature trees. Uh, as you can see by the graph on the slide, in order to reach that goal, we would, we would need to plant 28,000 trees per year. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, and it's certainly not going to be accomplished by our program exclusively to achieve this. We're going to need an army of volunteers, of stewards, of other organizations, of residents who are all connected to trees, care about trees, and are not only committed to planting them, but preserving them as well. Um, and that includes you all on the webinar as well uh, as people who care and people who show up. Uh, but why uh, does this goal even matter? Why do we care? Why are we doing all this work? Why are trees important? Uh, the, re the reduction in tree cover not only affects uh, how the city looks and the visual appeal of it, uh, but it has far reaching consequences for the health and well being of our community. Uh, trees play such a crucial role in mitigating the effects of climate change. They absorb carbon dioxide, release oxygen. Uh, they provide essential habitat to wildlife, they contribute to cleaner air, cleaner water, they improve our mental and our physical health, increase property values, lower energy costs. Uh, this list goes on and on as well. They make our environment healthier, they make us healthier, and they make our economy healthier. Uh, and losing our tree canopy means sacrificing all of these invaluable benefits. Uh, benefits that we need. Uh, we're in a climate emergency and headlines like the ones on this slide are only increasing in frequency, um, but by increasing efforts on reforesting our city's landscape, uh, we can reduce the frequency of headlines like this. Uh, so because of this, Western Reserve Land Conservancy launched our program, the Reforester City Program in 2014, to reverse the trend of canopy loss and help the city reach its goal of 30% canopy cover. Yeah, so uh, there's another angle to uh, a lot of this urban forestry that uh, we do at Reforest Our City and Western Reserve Land Conservancy. Um, equity is really central to our mission. Um, as you can see from the photos on the screen, uh, one neighborhood 
uh, is enjoying far more benefits from the trees around them than the other. Uh, unfortunately, um, the way in which uh, trees are distributed in Cleveland uh, kind of has a dark history, which we're going to cover uh, to a very surface degree uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, so here's a beautiful sycamore. Um, it probably is not the same one that's in the black and white photo, uh, but these are the types of trees that were planted early in Cleveland's history, all the way up until you know the 1920s, uh, as kind of Cleveland was growing out as a huge population center in the Midwest. Um, unfortunately, if we go to the next slide, uh, these programs were really only offered to uh, particular neighborhoods and <laughs> people. And uh, the way that this was kind of decided was unfortunately based on uh, race as well as uh, economic uh, advantage. So here's an example of kind of one of those street plans that I discussed. Uh, this is for uh, an area in Parma. Um, you know, this was really intentionally done to give all those benefits that Erica kind of mentioned uh, to the people living in those areas. And this is the result today. Um, you know, this is a, a beautiful picture of a, you know, sidewalk in the Edgewater neighborhood. Uh, you can see the tree lawns are very large. Uh, the trees are well spaced and well maintained and the residents are reaping the benefits of this. It's probably much cooler in the summer walking down the sidewalk under the shade than it would be if those trees were not present. And here's a counterexample of a neighborhood in Cleveland that was not given those advantages. Uh, you can see that there's not even a tree lawn present. Uh, the lots are small. Uh, you know, the trees were not planned. The, even the, the yards were not really large enough to, to sustain large trees to the degree that would provide benefits. Um, and we're going to kind of get into the reasons behind that in a little bit. But at the end of the day, trees are a visual indicator of uh, investment and disinvestment. You can tell which neighborhoods and which people uh, were planned for and cared about uh, when the city was expanding, and you can tell which ones were unfortunately not. And this is a, probably a no-brainer. <laughs> you probably walk on the sidewalk on the right uh just you'd feel better the air would be cooler uh everything just is a lot more pleasing about the trees in that photo uh, so this is kind of what we we're getting at this is a, a map of cleveland uh, a redlining map of cleveland so the red areas on the map are areas that uh, were denied uh, people from those areas were denied the ability to uh, access loans and and ben and benefits from the government that would allow them to generate and build wealth in their neighborhoods and the areas in the green and blue are areas that were provided those benefits they were offered uh, mortgages and loans to secure uh, housing you know do community improvements and have a generally higher quality of life So this is today, this is a chart that uh, gives you kind of an index of uh, hazard from heat. So in the summer, Cleveland is uh, just about where that black circle is. Uh, so you can see that, you know, even without uh, exacerbating heat effects with climate change and urban, urban heat island effect, uh, Cleveland's already in, you know, that caution, extreme caution area. Anyone who has lived here in a normal summer, maybe not last summer, but uh, it gets very hot, it's humid, uh, and heat stress can be fatal, uh, particularly to vulnerable populations. So uh, our goal is to you know, mitigate those effects. We know that Cleveland was planned uh, intentionally to kind of deny the benefits of trees to certain areas. Uh, so our goal is to, you know, now plan on providing those benefits, particularly in those areas. Uh, so this is just kind of in the context of heat and heat stress, uh, but these are a lot of benefits that trees can provide. You know, they they help the ground absorb more water and stay cool. 
Uh, they give off uh, moisture in the air, kind of like sweat, and it wicks away heat. Uh, they provide shade, they clean the air. Uh, all of these effects uh, are correlated with healthier outcomes for the people living in those areas. So we always circle back to why trees. You know, Erica did a great job of kind of explaining uh, the benefits of trees, um, but it's not just the environmental benefits, it's not just the human benefits, and it's not just the economic benefits. All of these things are interconnected uh, and affected by trees and tree canopies. So uh, that's why we focus on, you know, building the urban tree canopy in the areas that we do. So just to hammer it home, we want to increase tree, Cleveland's tree canopy by growing trees, uh, advocating for mature trees, which is uh, unfortunately the probably the best angle. You know, the the rate of tree loss is 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 far greater than the rate of tree planting, uh, and that needs to change significantly if we're going to uh, avoid that 14% as opposed to 40% or 30% tree canopy cover. And we want to empower residents to do the same because at the end of the day. Uh, even if we're a, a moderate to large nonprofit, we can only do so much by ourselves. We need community-led tree plantings, people advocating for mature trees in their neighborhoods, uh, and pressuring people in power to do the same. So our strategies, grow, advocate, and empower. Uh, we're gonna break down kind of a little bit of what we do in each of those categories, uh, just so you have a better idea of you know exactly what we do to achieve those goals. Uh, and before we get to, into that, here's a nice little uh, visualization of a map. Uh, we're going to have kind of four successive slides that will show you kind of our our reach and our scope. Um, so this is a map representing events hosted. Uh, this could be you know get-togethers for tree stewards or uh, celebrations uh, of you know, tree planting initiatives, uh, giveaways, uh, community cleanups, all kinds of stuff like that. So these are a uh, representation of uh, all of our events hosted in the Cleveland area. Overlaid on that, we have uh, trees planted. Now, it's a little difficult to see kind of <laughs> the quantity of trees because some of these are very close together and this is very zoomed out, uh, but you can see you know, that adds to it, and we're primarily focused in that eastern uh, portion of the city, which was historically redlined. So that's that's our focus. Uh, but in addition to planting trees and growing trees, uh, we also give away a lot of trees. We actually give away more trees than we plant. Um, and these go on residential uh, properties, and people take care of those themselves. Um, but this is a really a good auxiliary way to increase the tree canopy without having uh, necessarily to take care of all those trees. Hopefully all these residents uh, are informed because we give them information through pamphlets and uh, they might be trained tree stewards and stuff like that. Um, but hopefully they can plant and maintain these trees uh, appropriately to help achieve our goals. And then lastly, as I talked about, we train tree stewards. Um, we usually have a cohort of about 30 to 40 people a year uh, that we take through a, I think altogether it's 20 hours uh, training where we teach them proper planting, maintenance, uh, planning, um, and then they get some tools and, uh, and some hands-on training with planting and, and pruning uh, so that they can you know, be vectors of change in, in their own neighborhoods. Uh, so yeah, com community tree plantings are uh, a huge part of what we do. It's what I focus on a lot as the <laughs> tree care coordinator, because I we end up taking care of these trees that are part of our plantings. Um, but we we really strive to get the community involved as much as possible, because at the end of the day, if the if the community that the trees are in doesn't want the trees, then uh, you didn't do a good service to that community. So a lot of this is educational outreach. Um, informing people of the benefits of trees, uh, making sure we have all the right partners in the neighborhoods. And then it's always a good time uh, to get together with people and plant in, in a space that they're going to be in a lot of the time. And they can come back and appreciate having that day. And maybe we'll see them when we come back and perform maintenance on those trees. And it's a, it's a great relationship. Uh, it's one of my, the most rewarding parts of my job is to plant a tree and then come back and 
see someone who was there with me planting a tree and say hello and you know grow those relationships but what most people don't realize is that planting trees is uh not that useful if you let the trees die <laughs> we can plant as many uh tree plantings as we'd like but if you know 90 percent of those trees are dying because they don't get watered or you know they're not protected but or they are not wanted by the community and they take them out or they're illegally planted without a permit on public land and the city takes them down uh it, it, you waste a lot of time and energy so uh, we spend a lot of time in that planning process and then we spend even more time maintaining those trees so we, we deliver 15 gallons of water to trees in their establishment period which is generally two to three years uh, and that's per week per tree uh, we also make sure that the trees are mulched appropriately uh, they have accessories like stakes and deer fencing to protect from uh, both <laughs> deer and humans with lawnmowers and weed whackers and uh, <laughs> cars and all kinds of stuff. And it's not always successful. People, you know, we we experience vandalism sometimes, usually an unintentional or incidental, but uh, we always replace those trees as well. If we find that they uh, die or are damaged significantly, and uh, after three years, we uh, perform young tree training on all of our trees, uh, which allows them to grow in ways that, you know, reduces hazard, increases their structural, um, their strength, uh, so they don't fail and cause hazard, um, and just makes them look really nice in the places that they are, uh, so that people can enjoy them to their to their full potential. Uh, so here's just a, a quick example of a, a planting. Um, in May May 2018, these, these trees were planted, and you can see they're pretty small. They're maybe five, six feet tall. Uh, but, you know, after five years uh, watering, uh, they're ready to be pruned for the first time. Uh, looks like this one hasn't been pruned yet, <laughs> but uh, they're ready to be pruned, and they're, they're starting to give off some of those benefits that we talked about. You know, that tree, when we put it in the ground, that little stick in the ground isn't sucking up that much CO2 or, uh, you know, mitigating that much water. But, you know, this tree is a three or four inch trunk on the right, and it's got quite a bit of leaves. It's it's starting to do some stuff. And, uh, you know, 10, 15 years, that's, that's going to be significant, especially if you add up all of the trees that we plant. So I'll hand it off to Erica to kind of run through the rest of our program, uh, and then we'll take some answers, questions and answer, uh, answer them at the end. Awesome. Thanks, Devin. Uh, so now we're getting into more of what my position covers, which is more of the people side of the Reforest Our City program, where we're really trying to not only grow trees, because we're still growing trees, but also empowering uh, volunteers and residents to also uh, advance our mission. Uh, so we host a tree adoption program called Trees for Clee, where Cleveland residents are able to get one to two free trees to plant in their yards. Uh, so about 70 to 80 percent of Cleveland's tree canopy potential is located on private property. So, so by providing these free trees, as well as the relevant care materials so that residents know how to care for them and we're ensuring that they're surviving uh, through their establishment um, and giving these to residents and business owners who own private property, um, we're able to get uh, trees planted in places we otherwise wouldn't. Um, and really generate a great impact on our city's reforestation effort. Um, it's also a great way to do community outreach and have conversations with residents about trees and the importance of them um, and kind of educate them on, on why they should plant a tree in their yard. Um, we give away over 500 trees every single year uh, to Clevelanders. Uh, and since the program's inception, we have connected over 1,000 trees uh, to residents throughout the city. Uh, we also host an educational program called our Tree Steward Training, uh, where interested individuals learn how to plant and care for uh, trees in the city. We cover a variety of topics, including the benefits of trees, tree biology, intro to tree identification, uh, environmental equity issues, 
um, planting best practices, young tree training, maintenance, uh, and more. Uh, and we host our tree store training for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one, we want more community members to have that foundation of knowledge of trees and community forestry so that more trees in the city are cared for properly. Uh, we want to empower people to advance our mission and become community foresters in their neighborhoods and in their cities. Uh, and we want to create a dedicated and educated volunteer base that attends our events uh, and can help guide other attendees at our events uh, so that we can really uh, do our job better uh, with more expertise and hands on deck. Uh, we've since extended our tree steward programming to include graduate level training. Uh, so this is our planting leader training, uh, which is meant to, it, it's focused on uh, the more empowered and dedicated tree stewards uh, that really show up to all of our events uh, so that they can not only learn proper tree care, but also learn how to educate and facilitate volunteers at our tree planting events and others. Uh, so our planting leaders are trained to lead groups of five to ten volunteers through how to properly plant a tree um, at our event. So you can see on the slide that's Chris Vild. He's one of our uh, biggest rock stars and he's walking a family through uh, planting a tree. They're, they're at the first step, but uh, it's really it's really cool to see volunteers grow. Uh, and, and really turn into major assets to our program in the city. Um, our tree stewards also go on to be successful in other ways as well on their own. Uh, many of our tree stewards have started neighborhood tree coalitions in their community. Uh, the example on the slide is Heights Tree People who have planted hundreds of trees uh, on the east side suburbs and it's a coalition that was formed out of uh, two tree stewards who took our training and decided to um, start making change in their, in their neighborhoods. Uh, we've had tree stewards also just plan and implement their own tree planting projects on their streets. Um, our intent with tree steward training is really to create an army of tree advocates and community foresters. Uh, and that looks like a lot of different things, whether it's just volunteering, volunteering at our events, it's hosting and planning a tree planting on your street, it's starting a neighborhood tree coalition um, or a mature tree um, advocacy group. Uh, it can really look like a lot of things. Or it's just talking to your neighbor about how to properly care for a tree. Um, it looks at a lot of different ways, but our tree steward program is really, really meant to uh, community build and create that army um, of stewards of our mission and really empower people to be stewards of our mission. Um, our manager, uh, of the manager of the Reforester City Program also sits on the City of Cleveland's Urban Forestry Commission, uh, which serves as an advisory committee to assist the mayor, city council, Cleveland Urban Forestry, and the Planning Commission um, in assuring that the benefits of trees are being provided to the citizens of Cleveland. Um, and it's focused heavily on mature, mature tree um, preservation policy. And, and there are also two additional tree stewards who sit on the Urban Forestry Commission as well. Uh, so that's a little bit about what our program is, uh, what we do, and how we do it. Um, again, our mission is to increase Cleveland's tree canopy by growing trees, advocating for mature trees, and empowering residents to do the same. Uh, we do that by growing trees, advocating for trees, and empowering people. Um, and this is kind of our program portfolio of where our different different strategies play into that. Um, um, so that's the background, that's our presentation, and uh, we are happy to take any questions that you have on our program or on trees in the city or just trees in general. Um, so thank you, thank you for listening. Devin and Erica, thank you for that overview of the Reforest Our City program. Man, do I love trees. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited to uh, have this uh, Q&A here. Um, I see we've got a few questions pulled up. And uh, yeah, I, just, I, I guess I'll just start from the top. Um, so 
I, okay, this is a paragraph, I'll just read it off. Um, so somebody says that they are affiliated with a business that is currently constructing a development in the Wood Hill area of Cleveland along Buckeye Road. Their business has a sustainability committee and we would like to try and create a tree planting event around Arbor Day or later this fall, if that proves to be a better uh, tree planting time. Um, they're wondering if uh, there's anyone that they could coordinate with through uh, their office and could and do does the Western Reserve Land Conservancy provide uh, information on what kinds of trees would be appropriate for the area? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, so Erica's uh, contact info is here on the screen now. So uh, please do reach out uh, if you that sounds like a great idea and opportunity. So uh, I'm sure we'd be happy to offer any assistance that we could. Um, we we would happily uh, give guidance on tree selection and so, and stuff like that. Um, I'd be it kind of depends on whether it's private or public. So uh, maybe give us some, some more details in an email, uh, and we can see what we can do. That's cool that you guys like um, like coordinate with a lot of community groups and stuff. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's cool to hear that like there are people on this call who actually might um, like reach out and schedule events. That's 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 really great. Um, I, Very exciting. I, yeah. Um, I was uh, really fascinated to uh, hear about all those local tree steward groups that are just more or less created organically uh, by uh, a lot of the people who do those tree steward training events. Um, I was wondering, on behalf of residents though, um, how can residents learn about local tree steward groups and uh, how, to, how to join them? Um, I can take that question. Uh, we I recommend that if you're interested, sending me an email. Um, I am happy to connect um, anyone with any local tr tree steward group that I know of. I recommend taking tree steward training and, and getting in that network and being able to mm -hmm. talk to people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as well, uh, one thing that I'm working on is is developing a page on our website that will have the, all of that information and, and ways to tap into resources like that so that you can get involved. Because um, we definitely need more call to actions for uh, tree um, preservation and tree planting in the city of Cleveland and broader Cuyahoga County as well. Okay, that's, that's, that's good to know that these groups are out there and uh, that uh, anyone attending can just uh, send Erica an email to see uh, where uh, these uh, true groups might be located. That's good to know. Um, so yeah, uh, in the meantime, though, to, sorry, just to add on to that, um, you know, reach out to your local CDC uh, if you have one that services your area um, or even your council person. Um, if you have a block club, you know, there's usually people uh, around you that are, have similar interests and maybe if, uh, you know, a planting you know, group or a, a garden club doesn't exist near you and you want to start like a tree club, uh, maybe you can find a handful of people and, and get it off the ground. But uh, as Erica said, taking that tree steward training program, which is free, uh, you yeah. just have to register for it. Um, it would be a great start uh, for a knowledge base. That's that's, that's certainly good to know. Um, so, um, like getting to the specifics of where um, the WRLC is uh, actually trying to increase um, the urban tree canopy. Um, are there any like particular neighborhood neighborhoods where most of your focus is taking place? Uh, yeah. So as I mentioned before, uh, we kind of stick to formerly red line neighborhoods. Um, so mm -hmm. honestly, you could pick, you could pull up a map of you know Cleveland red line and. Yeah, you know, the red areas are where we're primarily active, uh, yep. but this is another good map. Yeah, whichever you can show whichever one. It's the same, same deal. Uh, so we stick to you know uh, the near east side, um, south the southeast side, and and parts of Collinwood, um, yeah. as well as as certain portions of the west side, uh, Cadell and mm -hmm. Clark Fulton. Some uh, are also priority neighborhoods in some respects, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we stick to those areas that have been historically uh, disadvantaged. I see. Um, I was I was actually wondering. Uh, 
does this reforest our city program only take place within confines of the city of Cleveland or are your efforts in places like East Cleveland or Brooklyn, places like that? Um, in the past, we've done more so Cuyahoga County efforts, but in the past, probably like I'd say three years, we've exclusively been focusing our program efforts on the city of Cleveland because uh, our mission is to increase uh, Cleveland's tree canopy specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we focus all of our efforts within uh, the municipal boundaries of Cleveland. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that is I a mean, good question though, because uh, you know East Cleveland, uh, you know Warrensville Heights. Uh, so there's a few other near uh, sub inner ring suburbs that you mm -hmm. know are also affected by those uh, historical processes um, and have low tree canopies. And you know that's a debate that we have internally. Um, you know, you know it's hard to say who deserves our services, but at the end of the day, it's easy for us to you know draw a line around Cleveland and say, you know, that's just one. That's one metric we use. Yeah, okay. and, and that's also why it's important for for those neighborhood tree coalitions to kind of like form uh, to fill in those gaps um, because okay, yeah. things in, in cities like East Cleveland. But. Yeah, I've seen the I've seen um, I've seen like the Cuyahoga County map of how um, each. Uh, like city differs in urban tree cover and then there's Cleveland smack in the middle and it's got like the worst color out of all of them so yeah it's no surprise that uh, your focus is there um we're getting some questions about the tree steward training program um I'll just read two of these off one is there a cost to the program and two uh does the is the training offered for folks outside of the Cleveland area or the or Cuyahoga County um, so there is not a cost associated with tree spread training, um, but unfortunately it is only for Cleveland residents. We're currently working, uh, we think our tree spread training program is super uh, vital and important and mm -hmm. should be exclusive to just Cleveland residents. All, um, our funding is for City of Cleveland exclusively. We're working on a model in which we can increase our capacity to take more uh, trainees because right now we only train uh, about 30 to 40 individuals each year and we're looking on ways that we can expand that um, to more to more people uh, mm -hmm. and in that we would maybe offer our tree steward training to Cuyahoga County residents maybe even expand that broader uh, but for a minimal cost mm -hmm. okay yeah um, yeah it makes sense I mean like uh, I mean, you guys are not an environmental nonprofit, limited resources, and uh, how's, as how you guys are saying, uh, we need to gather like an army of you know, tree stewards and stuff. So yeah, uh, do what you can, I guess. Um, but definitely uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> sorry, what? But definitely stay tuned on the tree steward training being more widely accessible. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so we're getting some questions about um, the future of the Reforest Our City program. Um, I know that like for at least like in the short to medium term foreseeable future, uh, Western Reserve Land Conservancy will be focusing on the uh, urban Cleveland, the city of Cleveland itself to help reforest the program. Uh, but are there any uh, plans to expand that to other cities? Um, uh, in particular, someone was wondering about outer ring suburbs like South Euclid, regional counties like uh, Lake County and Summit County. Um, is there any talk at, uh, at the Conservancy to expand this program? Um, maybe not to that extent, <laughs> but uh, we're always looking to expand our program. Um, we still have a lot of room to grow even within the city of Cleveland, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, I mean, we, yeah. we don't plant nearly as many trees as need to be planted uh, yeah. to, to achieve our goals. So. I think the first step is is really getting our own footing uh, as far as uh, sustainable funding models, um, you know, full time, multiple full time crews that are planting. You know, there's a lot of expansion that needs to be done in Cleveland before we can really consider uh, expanding outside of that. That being said, kind of as Erica has mentioned, uh, you know, tree stewards are uh, transient. You know, people move. Uh, you know, we have a great tree steward who at one point was living in the city of Cleveland and she moved to. Cleveland Heights started the Heights Tree People. 
you know, that's that was self-sustaining and she moved back to Collinwood and now she's starting another uh, group over there. So, you know, that's what it takes is kind of that grassroots uh, kind of momentum. Um, and if you live in, I, I actually am a wrestling coach for Brush High School. So I, and I'm from, I lived in South Euclid for quite a while. So I'm a mm-hmm. big fan of South Euclid. I, I have much love for the city. Um, there are people in South Euclid that, that would be very into, you know, starting a, a coalition or group that, you know, maybe goes to city hall and says, Hey, what are you doing? Um, but it's a little bit less, comp- uh, more complicated for the city of Cleveland because it's so much larger. Uh, <laughs> the bureaucratic structure is just uh, ridiculous to say the least, but, um, you know, the smaller suburbs, uh, might be a little easier to, to enact some change in. And I know that, uh, South Euclid definitely uh, values those kinds of conversations. Yeah, I see. Uh, well, um, big things start small, right? Indeed. Yeah. Um, we're getting, uh, some questions about the particular kinds of trees, uh, that the Land Conservancy likes to plant. Um, uh, can either or both of you elaborate on the kinds of trees uh, the Conservancy likes to plant in the city? Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess I'll start with, uh, we give away, as Eric mentioned, we have trees for clean giveaways, uh, where we give away, you know, 10, 12 different species of tree every spring and every, and every fall. Uh, and those are primarily trees that can handle a kind of difficult urban environment. Um, cause you know, it's not, the, it's not a real forest. It's urban forestry, but it's, it's not a forest. Uh, <laughs> so there's salt, you know, people salt the roads, people, uh, you know, there's different pests and things. Uh, so generally trees that are, uh, hardy to urban hazards. Um, but we love, uh, big keystone species, oaks, uh, tulip trees. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, there's pretty, uh, flowering trees, red buds, uh, mm-hmm. service berries, dogwoods, you know, we don't, we don't have quite uh, a limitation on, as far as species, but there's probably 15 to 20 that uh, we generally stick to. And you can find those mm-hmm. if you uh, sign up for the Trees for Clean giveaway, a lot of those species. Okay. Um, so like, I've got several other questions about like the particular kinds of trees, but um, I do have one for the, I'm sorry, what was that program you just mentioned? The for the tree for CLE? Trees for CLE. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how can residents find out more information about that? Um, wrlandconservancy.org slash trees for CLE. WR, can you say that one more time? I'm typing it in the chat. So, uh, wrlandconservancy.org slash tree forkly four like number four number four c-l-e nice i think i might check that out right after this love trees cool um yeah and it is generally restricted to cleveland residents um but even if you don't live in cleveland and you want to know uh what types of trees you might be able to plant in south euclid or you know lakewood or whatever uh, you can still kind of access the sign up and it'll give you a list of the species. Heck yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, in, in particular about these species, uh, somebody was asking, um, do you at all plant conifers? Yeah. Yeah, we like eastern white pine a lot. Nice. Uh, we, we plant conifers. We do a lot of deciduous conifers also. We like bald cypress and dawn redwood. Nice. Um, those are our main main conifers that we plant is white pine, uh, dawn redwood, and bald cypress. Nice. I'm personally a big fan of conifers. Uh, <laughs> at Chagrin, nice. At Chagrin River Watershed Partners, which is like where I work. Um, yeah, whenever someone ha- has a question about conifers, they, they come to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, somebody was asking about... Uh, how can I convince my apartment complex to allow tree plantings and replace calorie tree pears? Uh, sorry, calorie pear trees. Um, and that's actually ties into a broader question of mine, which is how does the Land Conservancy confront invasive trees in um, in the city and how to balance that with the tree canopy cover targets? Uh, that's a really, really good question. Um... I, I, my headphones kind of 
cut out for a second, so I missed the part of the first question. Uh, I heard the, how do I convince my apartment complex to plant and replace trees? Uh, yell at them until they listen to you. Uh, yeah. Write a letter, get a, co get a coalition of apartment residents that, you know, you can have a united front. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, they could say no. <laughs> yeah. uh, there are ordinances from the city, depending on where you live, about cutting trees down, especially for development projects and replacing them. But uh, without all the details, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as uh, invasive species of tree, it's a great question because as we talked about, trees provide a lot of benefits and a lot of those benefits are provided regardless of if they're invasive or not. Um, so while we would love to replace every invasive species with a uh, native species, uh, you know, it's, you can't replace a 40 year old uh, invasive uh, mulberry with a 40 year old native mulberry. So uh, there's a delicate balance of, you know, kind of removal versus uh, planting. We're mm -hmm. focused primarily on planting and spreading those native species. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there are invasive species on lots that we plant on, uh, yeah. they usually, they might be removed in the, you know, development process. Okay, fair enough. So, like, for I, I'm sorry, Erica, did you want to say something? Well, I was going to add to Devin's answer a little bit in terms of so in terms of uh, reaching out to your apartment complex, a lot of it is in messaging. Uh, like mm -hmm. when you're when you're forming your messaging, really focusing on how planting trees is going to benefit them. Um, so talking about the benefit benefits of trees in the context of how it'll directly benefit your apartment uh, landlords or whatever. Um, so talking about increasing property values, saving on energy, um, adding aesthetic appeal, uh, appeal, really, really focusing on the benefits that um, they're going to care about, um, which a lot of times is the economic benefits. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of the second question of invasives, uh, mm -hmm. it's a complicated question because it's thinking about like short-term loss for long-term gain um, uh -huh. all those invasive species aren't really going to provide like true quality canopy uh -huh. um, so it's it's really kind of like a, it's more of a situational uh thing uh -huh. where maybe if we remove these invasives and replace them with oaks and sycamores and tulip trees uh, they're going to provide a lot more ecosystem services to the community on the long term. So it's worth removing them and losing those ecosystem services in the short term. Uh, and that's a question that the answer like tends to be different uh, in each thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 really fair. Um, I mean, like I can just imagine a scenario of a really huge, like calorie pear tree that has a huge canopy cover but you know it's a calorie pear tree and they're not good for the local ecosystem uh but yeah uh yeah i think it's just best to be honest with like how it's just specific for each 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 um each situation um but yeah so like if like residential companies or whatever like uh, apartment buildings for instance um uh, if they wanted trees, uh, could they go to the Trees for Clee program uh, provided by the Land Conservancy and get trees for free? Or are these available only for residents? Uh, trees for Clee is available for uh, anyone who owns private property in the city of Cleveland. Um, it's limited to two trees per address, um, mm -hmm. but, it, but it's, lim it's not limited to only residents. Okay. Okay. It just have to be planted on private property in the city. I got you. I got you. So yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I see. Cool. Um, okay. I'm looking at more questions. Thank you for the engagement attendees. Everyone's got a lot of questions today. Um, oh, this is a good one. Uh, so someone is asking if, uh, if the Land Conservancy knows of any training for commercial landscapers. Uh, the person says that they see a lot of mow blow crews destroying new plantings with mowers. And um, there's a lot of uh, this sort of um, like callous mowing taking place on the opportunity corridor so yeah uh do you know have any trains for commercial landscapers how to take care of trees um that's another great question and something that i'm actively working on 
Uh, the Cleveland Tree Coalition is also uh, trying to, you know, compile working groups of uh, landscaping and tree care professionals uh, so that they can have a, uh, you know, a database of people who are, who work in the tree care industry or are tree care adjacent, like a lot of landscaping companies are. Um, and, you know, I'm personally working on a, a, a way to get um, non-certified tree care professionals uh, a pathway to certification, uh, which gives you a lot of opportunities as a professional uh, as uh -huh. far as consulting and uh, all kinds of services you can offer with a certification. But uh, generally, I, I think what Erica would say is uh, sign up for tree steward training, especially yeah. if you uh, live in the city of Cleveland. Uh, that, that would be a great knowledge base for you or as a as a landscape employee or a landscape company owner uh, to have uh, all that knowledge, uh, especially if you're doing a lot of work around trees. Okay, yeah, that's 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 fair. Um, I wrote I wrote in the chat that the Cleveland Tree Coalition might have info for commercial landscapers. Yeah, um, yeah, I worked on landscaping over the summer just for a temporary job, and uh, the folks I worked with didn't really care about trees. They just wanted to cut the grass and spray the herbicide, and that was it. Um, yeah, so so like you mentioned in the beginning, um, Devin, when you were talking about. Uh, tree care maintenance um, after the new trees are planted. Uh, how that, well, obviously if all the trees that you plant eventually die, what's the point of doing it in the first place? Um, I was wondering, um, how much does land cons the Land Conservancy invest in tree care maintenance? Like, I don't know about numbers, I'm just saying, like, how Fantastic much goes into this? Fantastic question. Uh, generally, um, it's, a, it's a nine to one ratio. The one is, the cost of the tree, the nine is the cost of maintenance for three to six years. So uh, the way we budget, and this is far higher than most people would do, uh, we hire a, a very high quality of care. Um, yeah. But you know, we're we're buying a tree for seventy five, one hundred dollars, planting yeah. it, uh, and then that's getting cared for by a crew three summers. Uh, it's mm -hmm. getting pruned. So in total, we're investing about a thousand dollars a tree. Nine hundred of that is post planting. So that's a good, uh, <laughs> probably good metric. That's crazy. Wow. Um, yeah. I suppose that. Well, that kind of ties into my next question, which is like, um, how high are tree mortality rates for newly planted trees in urban Cleveland? Um, I'm not sure about. Generally, I, we do keep uh, track of our own metrics, um, and we're in the high. Well, I guess for uh, survivability, we'd be in the yeah. high 80s or low 90s, which is very high. I think uh, most places probably are closer to 75 or something like that. Um, but like I said, we 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 invest a lot, probably more than most, uh, in that post planting maintenance than than others. Hooray! <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I can imagine that uh, just due to the um, the high, uh, like the relatively high amount of investment you're doing for uh, already planted trees, I can imagine that like that mortality rate increases sharply if you know plant them, let them go, and you know let let God do it do what they like. But yeah, um, that's good that like you guys are constantly investing in those trees um, and like you know getting the best bang for your buck, I guess. Okay. You know, you could, there's arguments to be made about, you know, you could plant, you know, a thousand little saplings and maybe half of them die. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe that's a better model than planting, you know, 200 larger trees and 90% of them live. Uh, you know, there's probably math that can be done regarding that. And yeah. there's different models uh, that different cities and organizations use. Uh, but the one we use works for us uh, and we're trying to just make it better all the time. That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, you only can do your best. Um, and uh, it's it's cool that you guys are like tracking um, all that data through, I mean, like just simple data collection. That's good. Um, somebody's asking, uh, do you guys work with utility companies uh, to try to help preserve the tree canopy at all? Short answer is no. Um, 
Yeah, unfortunately, the utility companies are often the ones removing tree yeah. uh, yeah. Sometimes they sometimes they donate to us, um, but that's about the extent of our partnership with the utility companies. That's a big group. <laughs> oh man. Oh well. Yeah, my cousin she works uh, for um, Davy Resource Group, and they work with. Uh, the tree canopy companies all the time so she's up she's up like 50 60 feet in the air every every summer so yeah um i guess this is how it is sometimes um what I, what I will say on that though is yeah. uh you know those issues can be avoided well they could have been avoided if we just decided to put our utilities underground uh but they're not um but it can be avoided in the planning process so if you if you plant a tree lawn tree or uh if you're planning on planting a tree below power lines connecting to your house, uh, just make sure you're selecting a tree that does not grow as high as the power line. Uh, maybe a big tree goes somewhere else in your yard uh, or in your neighborhood and you stick to a small to mid-sized tree that's not gonna interfere and require a utility company to come and hack away at it. That's fair, yeah. Um, what are some like good kinds of trees that don't grow that tall? Uh, a lot of those flowering varieties um, in species, so uh, yeah. red buds, dogwoods, uh, crab apples are a pretty common example, although mm -hmm. uh, people have mixed feelings about those. Um, but there's other small trees that are uh, a little you know, like mid-sized trees, like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, a little leaf linden, or and there's different varieties and cultivars of certain species that maybe grow less tall than the, the regular kind, so. Just make sure you do your research and there's a tree selection guide in the Cleveland tree plan if anyone has ever uh, seen that or uh, you can search it on on Google and, and find it there's a good selection guide there tree selection guide under the Cleveland tree plan that sounds like a very useful resource for um, you know, for, for, for residents um, yeah uh, I think I might include that in my follow-up email if anyone's interested I'll, I'll, I'll make a note of that um, okay well uh, Looks like we're pretty much running out of the questions here. Oh, wait, no, somebody did, just asked. Um, are there any initiatives? Well, like, you know, what is the Land Conservancy doing to try to preserve the trees that are already there? Like the ones that you guys don't plant, the ones that are already in the city, help them keep the tree canopy cover. Um, what are you guys doing to help those? If anything, yeah. So that's a that's a tough one. Um, Erica kind of mentioned the uh, tough problem. Uh, Urban Tree Commission um, that our manager Tom Schreiber is a part of. Um, they do a lot of the policy work as far as uh, putting out ordinances or reviewing ordinances that exist. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's you could have laws in the books that say you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, if people aren't enforcing it, then <laughs> you know it doesn't really matter. So a lot of the problem is surrounding enforcement, uh, and that's a bigger, more complicated problem than than we at ROC are really dealing with. We do have uh, people dealing with uh, policy at the state level in the yeah. in Western Reserve Land Conservancy more generally. Um, but you know, all you can really do is appeal to politicians and legislators to uh, do the things you would like, and they make the they make the rules. Unfortunately, I see. I guess that's where we are with that. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, ooh, this is a good question. So, um, as I'm sure a lot of us already know, um, urban areas have a huge problem with uh, food deserts, um, and uh, there's has been this movement the past couple of years in urban settings to bring back urban gardens, urban farms, stuff like that. And uh, somebody's asking, um, is your organization doing anything to promote the planting of fruiting trees, apple trees, pear trees, uh, to help reduce food deserts and increase the urban canopy at the same time? Um, we do not plant fruit trees um, in general. Uh, fruit trees take a lot more uh, of maintenance hmm. than other trees just because you have to prune them a certain way uh, for fruit production. They just have a different type of maintenance that our tree crew um, kind of isn't set up to do. 
uh, but we do plant a lot of native trees that have edible fruit like service berries, a uh, big advocate for pawpaws. We give away a lot of pawpaws in our tree giveaways every season. And then when we do work with community gardens, um, that will kind of like offload the maintenance to them. Uh, we'll order order fruit trees in those circumstances. That's fair. Um, I've seen rep recipes for pawpaws included in, I don't know, food. I, I've never tried one before, but I don't know, I guess it, Sorry, what? <laughs> Highly recommend. recommend. They're delicious. What am I missing? My favorite is probably actually service berries. Service berries taste nice. like, uh, they taste like blueberries to me, but they grow in a tree uh, and they're very abundant in June. Uh, if you know, if you know a location of one, go try it out. Heck yeah, okay. Well, maybe I shall. That's cool. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think we pretty much got to the end of uh, uh, the big key, the big questions for today. So, uh, Erica, Devin, you guys ready to wrap up? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you again for uh, presenting on the Reforest Our City program. Um, I thought we had a great discussion on... Um, uh, the efforts that the Western Reserve Land Conservancy is uh, undertaking to help uh, improve the health and lives of residents of Cleveland by uh, planting healthy, nice trees. So, um, and uh, to the attendees, thank you for asking a bunch of really cool questions. Uh, I'll make sure to send a follow-up email uh, with the recording of this webinar, uh, a survey, and uh, possibly a link to a few resources mentioned in the chat. So, uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, and uh, hope you guys enjoy your weekend, and uh, have a nice day. Thank you so much for having, for having us. Have a great day. Right. Devin, Erica, thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Just...